Well, welcome to Humanities 101, and this will be the first week and the first lecture that you would watch uh, in the course. And so what I want to do is briefly just an introduction of humanities. Now, what is humanities? And we'll talk about that uh, between this and your readings. Uh, you are going to find, of course, a great deal of similarity, but there'll be also some difference that would be put forth. Um, that's one thing about humanities, and when we study humanities and when you're reading uh, for this class, you're going to see, well, you know, the question there is, you know, what is humanities? And the instructor on that instance uh, Mr. Jewell who writes that paragraph uh, basically it's it it was you know what is the humanities well it's everyone you know really you're talking about humanity and the expression of humanity itself but when we talk about the humanities we're talking about certain subjects So let's get into it. What is humanities? Well, the humanities are academic disciplines that study various aspects of human culture, history, literature, philosophy, language, and more. So it is an expression of the human condition. So we talk about humanities, at the core of it is the human being, but the expression of that human being comes out in various disciplines. And for the purpose of a educational course, we're lo looking at academic disciplines in which the humanities are covering, okay? What are some of those core disciplines? Well, those core disciplines are things like literature, history, philosophy, and art and visual culture. So when we think about the humanities as an academic discipline, this is what we're talking about. So you'll go through in college, English 101, English 102, then you'll have your literature courses. Literature and the writings of a society are an expression of the individual and the times in which the individual lives. So it's very well part of the humanities. Also history, when we study history, we're studying people in a context. Maybe you haven't thought about studying history that way, where really what you're doing when you study history, you're studying how individuals worked in the time frame in which they existed. Often what we do is something called presentism, where we try to overlay the thoughts and ideas of the current age upon you know, someone in the 17th century. Well, those thoughts and those ideas did not exist in the 17th century. So when we study history, we study individuals who have thoughts and ideas of their time and subsequent thoughts and ideas from the previous ages before. Um, and that moves into the other area and core discipline, uh, philosophy. And these are the thoughts and ideas. The philosophy is basically what people are thinking and what individuals have thought throughout time and how those thoughts have been formed. And so it, it is good to understand philosophy because philosophy is coming from the human experience 
And when someone writes a philosophy, whether it be uh, Karl Marx or whether it be uh, Hume or Freud or anyone else, Nietzsche, they are coming at that with the ideas and thoughts they have in their time frame, and they are coming up with thoughts and ideas based on the philosophies of the previous generations. Um, so if you ever get an opportunity to take a literature course, a history course, a philosophy course, you'll see those very concepts coming forward. Also, uh, art and visual culture, uh, even back to paintings on a cave wall in you know centuries past, uh, we have expressions of what we hold to be important. And when man was able to draw and draw to the place where it could be expressed, you know, these visual images became part of the zeitgeist, became part of the culture, and they were an expression of individual thought and so forth. Well, moving from those core disciplines, we want to look at why the humanities are important or the importance of the humanities. The number one thing is it's an insight into the human condition. When we look at all these things together, it's showing us where we are, what we believe, how we are expressing what we believe. And so it's an insight into the human condition. Also, it fosters critical thinking or at least we hope it does. Critical thinking is important. Um, you know, often someone say, well, you know, you might be very skeptical or questioning. Well, I don't think there's anything be wrong with being skeptical. There's nothing wrong with being questioning um, because that's just an indication that you're actually thinking about things. So many people often aren't thinking critically. And I believe the humanities, you know, whether it be literature, philosophy, history, economics, visual art and culture, all these things combined could help us to be a very well-rounded person and to pull back and look at our current situation whether that be on the micro scale or the macro scale, and think critically about it. So it does foster critical thinking. It also does preserve a cultural heritage. Because we all have a culture. Society itself has a culture. Our families have a culture. Our geographical regions have culture. And if we don't understand these things in their proper context, we have this, sometimes this innate maneuvering in us where uh, we want to you know, reject a given culture. Some of you are, are older adult students. Some of you are students right out of high school. And for those older adult students, uh, you probably see the importance of preserving whatever culture you have. And, and for those who are younger, you're going to see the necessity to, to preserve um, a cultural heritage that you have, whether it be in your family, whether it be in society, whether it be um, globally. When I was a young person, 
I um, I didn't I didn't like my accent. I didn't like that I do at least sound southern. So I tried for years and years and years, you know, <clears throat> just to kind of clear up my accent so I wouldn't sound so southern all the time. Um, however, the older I got, the more I, I thought about it. And I was like, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with sounding like where I'm from. So even with you know, advanced degrees, sometimes I, I'll throw an and in there. You know, I remember my second grade teacher, when I, I would use the word ain't, uh, she would get on to me, uh, profusely, but she was also a distant relative, but she wanted to, you know, you know, church me up, so to speak. Uh, she wanted to, to make my English better. And I, and I very well respect her for that. I was thankful for that. Um, but there's something about culture and there's something about preserving, uh, part of who we are. And there's not anything wrong with that. And the humanities kind of teach us that. It does also enhance or help enhance our communication skills. Uh, it's not good, just good at, uh, well, I would say cocktail parties, but we don't live in the Northeast and I've never been to a cocktail party. Uh, it's not, it's not just, uh, something you can, um, pull out and with, we, uh, recall when you are with someone, uh, it's not just something to use the humanities, but it does help to be able to recall things from the past and talk about ancient Greeks and their mythology. And it, it helps you to be a better conversationalist and to be better at communicating with others using a general knowledge that everyone has. The humanities are, yes, interdisciplinary in nature, meaning that you have the intersection of many other fields. I mean, we're, we're talking about history. We're talking about philosophy. We're talking about literature. We're talking about you know, economics and cultural aspects. We're talking about all these things because all of these things are part of the human experience. So when we communicate this is what we are communicating we're communicating the cross sections of all these academic interdisciplinary fields oh, we're talking about psychology sociology all these what we would call humanities and we're also enriching our own perspectives by going through this so it's not just about how we view the world. When we study humanities, we are looking at how everyone views the world. And everyone views the world through a different cultural lens. And everyone's cultural lens is to be respected to a point. We ought to be able, you know, and this is what attempting, we're attempting in the study of the humanities, we ought to be able to gain insight into the perspectives of others, not only in this period of time, but in the cultures of our past. Again, that's very important. When we go into the past, we're not dealing with people who view this world the way we do. You know, George Washington did not have an iPhone. And now I'm speaking to not only adult learners because I didn't grow up with a cellular phone. You know. But young people who have never known anything but an iPhone because it, it came out when you were four years old. So we have a different cultural perspective 
than other people have. Uh, we have a different cultural uh, perspective from people who grew up in different communities than we did. Um, but it enriches our perspective in that we see that not only do we have a perspective, but so do others. And those perspectives are to be valued. As far as interpretation and subjectivity, uh, there is a reliance on interpretation uh, when we come to humanities. Um, we, we see the world with our own presuppositions. And I'm moving into the, the field of philosophy when I use something of that nature and that verbiage. Uh, we view the world in a certain way. And we interpret the things around us in a given way. You know, I grew up in a, you know, pretty much lower middle class household. My mom was a secretary. My dad was an electrician. We didn't have a whole lot growing up. But I didn't know it. But but we weren't rich. And, you know, we struggled. So I identify with people who struggle because of the struggle that I went through as a young person. Now, I still struggle but there are things that I no longer struggle with. Uh, I'm not, you know, lower middle class anymore. And I'm thankful for a, soci a society in which, you know, you can gain understanding, you can gain monetary wealth and not have to struggle in certain ways anymore. And so now, not only do I interpret through the perspective of uh, a young person who struggled as, you know, a lower middle class person, whatever that means, uh, coming from a family who ultimately lost everything because we made bad decisions about money and didn't have it a whole lot to begin with, to now someone who is going to pass on something to their child um, and, and their child will not have the same perspective of growing up that they did. And so my, my child won't have the same perspective that I did growing up. And hopefully you can move up in life and provide a better, provide a better, you know, childhood for your child. Or maybe you have and you're taking this class. But we're interpreting all these things through the lens of our own experience. And we're understanding that there are differing viewpoints. And I've already kind of hit on this, but um, you are at a certain place in your life right now. And that may be that you're, hey, a struggling college student and you're just looking to get by. And I was there too. And so I understand that perspective. And so you look at things differently than I do, but at least I can connect on certain ways. And there, But there's some ways that, and some things that you have gone through that I don't know anything about. And my culture and the area I grew up in, which is a rural area, maybe you grew up in a very urbanized area. I didn't. I grew up with a farm. You know, I grew up with a two-acre garden out behind my house that I worked on when I got off the bus in the afternoon uh, because my grandparents were out there and you know, I grew up around my grandparents. So we all grew up differently. We all experienced life differently. And we have to understand that we have different viewpoints, different perspectives. And we have to work toward commonality as much as possible and to see from the other person's perspective. And then cultural impact. 
Through humanities, what we're doing is we're shedding light on cultural norms. Uh, and we're also trying to understand societal evolution. Shedding light on cultural norms. So we're seeing the perspective of our culture through our lens. And we're finding commonalities, our cultural norms, things that we all experience. You know, uh, there are things in nature, of course, that we all experience. Uh, the sun uh, rises in the east and sets in the west, and we all experience that. You know, going back to a wonderful piece of literature that you may have read before, uh, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. We all experience the elements of nature. Uh, but we all experience a common culture. Yeah. And that culture is a reflection of who we are at that point, good or bad. And so through this, the study of humanity, we shed light on cultural norms. Uh, we also say, uh, understand societal evolution. Uh, and this and this can be done looking at history and seeing how our societies have evolved. Also, I believe with the best place to study and to understand the uh, societal evolution that we have come to is to study philosophy and how philosophies have impacted us so profoundly and so to, to me if we're going to understand societal evolution and where we are as a society where we are as a culture it's going to be through the study of philosophy through ideas and ideas have the power to impact a people not only you know it used to be where these ideas impacted a people within a given society but now through the internet and all the communication that we have and social media our access to ideas not only um, can it have an impact on the society in which the idea springs from which the idea springs but now it's going to have an impact on the culture and society all over the globe because we are a global people through the advent of technology. So there's a cultural impact when we think about the humanities. And then the humanities, humanities in modern society, in the insight into contemporary issues and a reflection on the consequences. Um, if we want to understand who we are today, we go back and we look into who we have been in the past. The ideas that have sprung forth from societies over time. And then we look at our current culture and what is going on in modern society. And if we understand our past, if we understand the thoughts and ideas from the past, then we're going to have a great insight into where we are today. And that's what the humanities can bring us. And a reflection on the consequences of those ideas. An idea um, is not neutral. So the thoughts and ideas that people have had are not going to not have an impact. Now you could make the argument and say, well, you know, that idea did not get very far. Yes, you could make that case. But with someone, that idea did take root it was planted 
It took root. It sprung forth. It grew and blossomed. And that growing and blossoming either causes society to be better or society to be worse. Rarely does it cause society to be just neutral, just normal, and without any change at all. And when you study the humanities and you study the human condition and you study people and their thoughts, you'll see that often these thoughts have some sort of consequence, whether that be a positive to society or a negative. Some challenges and some criticisms to humanities and the humanities. Some say that there's a limited practical applications that going on, go along with this. I think it's really a perspective of someone who doesn't know what the humanities are and how they can be useful. A lot of this comes from, I don't want to say the, the STEM area, but if you'll notice, everybody kind of has, you know, as you notice, if you, if you go through life, everybody kind of has their own um, hobby horse. They have this, their own thing that they think is the most important thing. And when it's not, Society and culture, which is not the most important thing, I understand, but maybe it's uh, maybe it's science, maybe it's engineering. Everything can be solved through these means. So maybe they downplay people's thoughts and ideas, and they say, "Well, they they have no impact." Uh, there is not limited practical application. I think there is, uh, I think if you don't understand history and culture, literature, philosophy, the arts, then you, you're, you're flying blind or at least half blind. Because you have to you have to understand the culture around you and the history before you and the thoughts and ideas of people to gain an understanding of what you need to do to move forward. And also there's increasingly limited funding and support for the humanities. Rightly so, in, in some instances, more money is being pumped into um, you know, engineering, the trades, and, and, and don't hear me speak, don't, don't hear me speak and think I'm speaking out against the trades. I, I think we absolutely need the trades. We need people who are engineers. We need people who are electricians. My father was an electrician. We need people who are plumbers. Uh, we need people who are you know, in, uh, civil engineers. We need all these people to make a society run. But that doesn't mean that's all we need. We need thinkers. Uh, we need people who are able to interpret the times around them and simply being an engineer doesn't give one the perspective of understanding people you know it's often you know dealing with someone who's in the sciences dealing with someone who's you know an engineer they're not you know the kind of the classic knock on people who are in that and not not just there you know accountants and and math people you know um they're just not a people person well people are not their strong suit absolutely well maybe a study of people a study of the humanities might help 
it might help them be a better, more well-rounded person so that when they are in the position of maybe being a head engineer and they have people to manage under them, they can understand the perspectives and different perspectives of those people who they are managing. So the humanities can help us understand people. And yes, there is a little bit less funding for these things, but uh, we're not going to let that bother us, right? We're going to say that they're important. But really, in conclusion, humanities are essential for understanding the human existence and unlocking the door to shed light on shared human experience. Uh, that is what the humanities do. And I hope through the study of this class that a better understanding of society, a better understanding of history and culture and philosophy and Psychology, sociology, economics, these, these disciplines that will be just hit on, you know, just, just given a little credence in the passing, uh, will help you understand not only the people around you better, but understand yourself. To understand your perspectives, what you bring to the table, why you bring that to the table. And it will be that key to help you unlocking the understanding of human existence. And it will help you understand our shared human experience. Because we are all human. And Usually someone would say that when they did something wrong, right? Well, I'm just human. We are all human. And we do need to keep that in perspective. And so when someone does mess up, right? We can look back at our past and the past of every person who has ever existed and say, well, you know, that's what we do from time to time. We mess up. But then what do we do? We pick ourselves up and we move forward as a people and as individuals and so there may be some questions that I ask and if these questions come up in our class in a formal manner well you'll answer these questions if not here's some just questions to consider what aspects of the humanities intrigue you? you know, what are you looking forward to discussing and forward to studying? And what do you believe is the relevance of the humanities in your life? I, I hope you can answer these two questions uh, after our discussion together today. Uh, Take care, be well, and we'll see you in the next video.